Want to learn how to work with text in DaVinci Resolve? Well, I'm going to walk you through the process and show you how to quickly get some awesome looking text effects like these. So hit the like button and let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are in Resolve, and the way that you add text inside of DaVinci Resolve is pretty simple. You add it as an effect from your effects library. If you can't see that, just go up to the top left here, and you should see your effects library button. Just click that to either deactivate or reactivate it. Titles are located in the titles section here, underneath your toolbox. So, if that's not visible, open up your toolbox and click on titles. And from here, adding text is as simple as clicking on a title and dragging it and dropping it over top of your piece of footage. I'm just going to be working with the basic title for right now, but we're going to be going over some other options in just a bit. Now, a title works pretty much just the same way as another piece of footage. As long as the layer is present on your timeline, that's how long the piece of text will last for. So as soon as we move to a portion where that text is no longer there, the text will disappear. So you're probably going to want to make sure that your text is the same length as your video footage. So just click and drag it forward like any other piece of footage. And there you go. Now to actually work with your text, you're going to have to use the inspector panel. It's up here in the top right. You can click on that to either get rid of it or to bring it back up again. Make sure that your title is highlighted, and from here you can start working with your text in a pretty intuitive way. In this rich text section here, you can see that you can actually retype the text to whatever you want it to say, and I'm going to make mine say Mars, to kind of go along with the piece of footage that we're working with. If you wanted to change the font, you can simply do that right underneath here. I'm going to choose Artlist Sans, and I'm going to choose the light variation. And here you can change the font face, but I'm going to stick with light for right now. You can also change the color to whatever you want, but for me, white is okay for the time being. You can also increase the size, the tracking, the line spacing if you have multiple lines of text. And from there on, you have tons of different other options, like for example, you can create an underline, an overline, a strike through, you can change the anchor point, the rotation, the position or zoom or scaling. And my personal favorite of all of these is the idea that you can change the font case, meaning that even though we typed it with one uppercase at the beginning and the rest lowercase, if we change the font case from mixed to say, for example, all caps, it'll actually respect that in our final result, even though we have lowercase in what we typed in originally. Increase the size, and that looks pretty good for me right now. Now you can change the position of your font here using these position sliders, but you can also just click and drag your font around the screen. But you'll notice that it's snapping to each of the center markers. So if we go up and down, we have a center snapping for the Y position. We also have a center snapping for the X position and we can tell really easily when it's in the exact middle. But we have a little bit of problem in our scenario here because the exact middle of frame isn't exactly the middle of where the planet is here and we want it to be directly over top of it. You could just manually move the positioning over a little bit here, but maybe that's not as intuitive to you. So another option is to hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and then click and drag. And even though you still have those grid markers there, you can move it wherever you want without the snapping taking place. So I'm gonna move mine to be right here. That looks pretty cool. But you'll also notice that underneath, there's also a bunch of other parameters that you can change. Like for instance, you can create a drop shadow. You can move the drop shadow over here. You can change the amount of blur, you can change the opacity. Might give you a really interesting look. Something like that doesn't look too bad. It's actually kind of interesting, but I'm not gonna be using this personally. But what if say, for example, that you wanted to deactivate the drop shadow, but you didn't wanna get rid of all that work? Well, you can simply deactivate the drop shadow by clicking this little button here, which will turn it off. And if you turn it back on again, all your work is right there. So let's just turn it off. You can also see that you have options like adding a stroke or adding a background. I'm personally not a big fan of backgrounds unless it's a solid white color on black or solid black on white, but you can totally find a different variation for what you like, but for the moment, I'm just gonna turn mine off. And here I have some text that I'm really happy with personally. But you might notice that there's a bunch of different other variations of text that you can add instead of just the basic title. So I'm gonna be going over a couple of my favorite and then I'm gonna let you explore the rest for yourself. But the next one that I'm gonna show you is called Text Plus. Basically, it's the exact same thing as a regular piece of text, only with more options to be able to customize it. So let's make mine say here, motion array. Let's change the font here. So you can see right away that you have what seems like less options. You have an advanced control section, you have a tab spacing, but it almost seems like you have less options available. That's because they're all in different sections here at the very top. 
You can click here to change the layout. You can click here to change the transform options, shading, image, and overall you have a lot more variation of what you can do. Some examples would be here underneath rotation. You can actually change things in 3D space now rather than just in the sort of twisting around motion here that you're used to. Underneath layout here, you also have some interesting options. Like for example, if you wanted a circular path for your text to follow, you can really easily actually create a nice spinning piece of text here. Especially if you keyframe it to start in one position, move forward, rotate it around, and then you can see that your text is actually rotating around and it took little to no effort. That's the power of Text Plus. It gives you all those extra additional features at your fingertips in a nicely formatted way. And underneath your transform section here, you have options like shear, where you can offset it in a particular way. You can change the X and the Y scaling individually. So you can make it taller than it is wide or wider than it is tall. But it would take a lot of time to just go through each of those individual parameters. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna show you some of my personal favorite text effects and then walk you through the process of how to get them. Thankfully, DaVinci Resolve has made this really easy because in their Fusion title section, they have a bunch of different text effects that are just default ready to go that I think actually look pretty nice. So I'm gonna be going over some of my favorites. The center reveal, for example, is pretty nice. I'm gonna drag and drop that over top of this Mars image here. This time you'll notice that it doesn't have that all caps option, so I'm gonna have to actually type that in manually in all caps, change the font, increase the size, increase the tracking a little bit. That looks pretty nice right about there. And you can see that the final effect looks something like this. Without any work, we just typed in our footage, repositioned it, and we're already getting something that looks pretty amazing. And all of these text effects look great by default as soon as you type in your text. I also love Digital Glitch, Fade On, Horizontal Line Reveal, and Random Write On. So those are just some of my personal favorites. I'd highly encourage you to look through the list and play around with a bunch and see what you like personally. And if you keep going back to the same ones over and over again, there's a really nice feature that you can do. You can see that on the right hand side of all these, there's this little star. If you click that, it'll actually bring it up in your favorite section here. Yours might be down here. You can just click and bring that up a little bit if you want. And you can always go back to here in your favorite section if you don't wanna sort through all these menus to find that one example that you really like. So if I want center reveal to be in here, you can click on that. If I want digital glitch to be in here, I can click on that. And now instead of having to go through all of these menus, I can just go right to my favorites, click, drag it on, and boom, my text is there, ready to go. Now, there's one more that I want to go over because it's a great example of something that comes close to something that I would use all the time, but it's not quite there. And that's the background reveal. So I'm going to get rid of this one, bring on the background reveal, and you can see that the final result is kind of cool, but oh, it's not usable for me personally. I really like the overall look. You can change the font, you can work it to your liking, except there's no way to get rid of this subtle little drop shadow in the back here. And that to me, sadly, just doesn't make it usable for the purposes that I would use it for. So I'm gonna be showing you how to get that effect custom yourself. It's actually easier than you might imagine, but we're gonna start with one or two easier effects just to get you used to working with text and creating effects out of them inside of Resolve. So we're gonna start by creating just a simple glow effect for your text. So let's click on the basic title here drag and drop it over top of your footage. I just have a nice simple background here. Let's make it say glow. Increase the size to whatever we want. Change the font. Nice, good starting point. Now to add a simple glow effect, you can actually just go down to the drop shadow here, click on the color and make it exactly the same color here as your text. So for me, that's just a simple white. Hit OK, and you don't notice any change yet until you start to increase the amount of blur and offset it slightly. There, you can start to see the glowing effect taking shape. And already, it just kind of looks good as it is. That's pretty nice. You can increase the amount of blur to increase the amount of glow. That actually doesn't look bad at all. That's how simple it is to get some of these nice effects. And if you wanted to even do something like make it pulsate a little bit, what you can do is you can click on the keyframe button here to create a keyframe for the amount of blur. Then move forward a little bit, drop it down the amount of blur, move forward a little bit more, bring up the amount of blur, move forward a little bit, drop down the amount of blur, 
move forward a little bit, bring up the amount of blur, and you can see that the result is that you get sort of this like pulsing to your glow. Do this enough times and it can sort of give this like light bulb fluorescent tube kind of feeling if you really wanted it to. But I'm gonna show you another way that you can get this glow effect just in case, for example, you can't get the exact effect that you're looking for with this method. There's always more than one way to do something. So I'm gonna turn off the drop shadow to get rid of the glow effect, and I'm gonna duplicate this piece of text here by holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, and then click and drag it one layer above. Now you have two pieces of duplicate text. We're gonna be working with the bottom one, and we're gonna go over here to Open Effects, and we're gonna search for a blur. Resolve Effects Blur is what we're looking for here, and we're gonna be adding a lens blur. Click and drag it over top of your text here, and you'll notice that, ah, we have a problem. You can't add effects like these directly to your text. This is one of the reasons that I wanted to start with an effect like this first, is because it kind of highlights one of the limitations of Resolve and one of the ways that you have to get around certain situations. So if you can't add things as basic as a simple effect to your text, then how do you actually fully work with your text to implement your vision? Well, you can right click on this piece of text here and you can create what's called a new compound clip. Basically what this will do is it'll take your text and it'll create an actual piece of footage out of it. It won't change any of the parameters. They'll be nested deeper within another layer, but this will give you the ability to actually work with adding effects onto your text. So click on new compound clip. Let's say, let's call it glow text, just so that we know exactly what this layer is. Hit OK. And you'll notice that it says glow text here on your actual layer within your timeline, but it also pops up within your media pool here in the top left. If you can't find that, just click on media pool right here. And now we can add our lens blur directly onto the glow text and we can see that our effect starts to take shape. And from here, we can click on our text that's newly converted into a piece of footage, go up to effects, and we can start playing around with the parameters to make our glow effect look exactly like we want it to. Adding effects to your text gives you so much more versatility when creating a particular look, but you don't have to add it just to your text in order to work with your text. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have an example of a piece of text that's not impossible to read, but it's really challenging because the background is so bright. You could change the color of the background, but another thing that you can do is you can add an effect, like say for example, that same blur or maybe a Gaussian blur to the footage that's underneath your text. And what you'll notice is that immediately, it's so much easier to read your text now. Learning how to work with your text is important, but it's also really important to learn how to work with the things around your text. And a great example of where those two things intersect is with that example that we were talking about before, with your text being see-through and being a cutout into the background without that nasty drop shadow there like we have in our background reveal. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add a basic piece of text, just like we've been starting with all of these. And for me, I'm gonna be choosing a really thick font because the thicker your font is, the easier it's gonna to be to see through because there's more stuff to see through. You're gonna to have to create a new compound clip to begin with. And the reason is because in order to make this see through, we have to go into our color tab. But you'll notice that once we do, we're not actually able to work with text within the color tab itself. We can click on other pieces of footage here, even footage with multiple layers, but we're never actually able to click on text which is kind of frustrating. So to get around that, go back to your edit panel here. Then do like you did before, right click and create a new compound clip. And let's call this train text. Now, if you're wondering at this point, well, how do we then work with our text if we wanted to like dive into this layer? Because this is a new video layer here. We can move this around and change it up, but we can't actually change the text or make it say anything different. It's hidden within a deeper layer. All you have to do to open that back up again is right click on that compound clip and then open in timeline. And there you go. You can work with this piece of text like normal and make it say anything else, change its parameters. And then to get back to your normal timeline, just make sure that you go under your timeline view options here and make sure that this option, the stacked timeline option is selected. And then that'll allow you to go back to this timeline here that we started in and perfect, that's how you can go back and forth pretty easily. So now that our train text is a compound clip, let's highlight it, go back to the color tab, and now here we can go to our qualifier section, signified by this little eyedropper here, go to your picker, and then click on the pure white or whatever color it is that your text is. You shouldn't notice anything different here because we have to do two additional things. Go over to your node section here. If you can't find that, just click on the little nodes option here, right click anywhere outside of a node, 
and then click on add alpha output. Here that'll pop up a little blue dot here and you just take the blue square, click and drag to the blue dot. And there you go, you've created an alpha output. So now all you have to do is go down to your invert section here and voila, you have a perfect cutout of your text showing through to the background. Now here you can take your footage that's underneath. You can change up the position to something that looks a little bit more symmetrical, cinematic, whatever makes it look exactly how you want it to. But here's the thing, with just a little bit of creativity, we can take this exact effect and bring it up to the next level. Here we can see that we have a piece of footage with just white and then a bunch of ink comes through here, but wouldn't it be cool if we could take this exact same concept, start with pure white, and then have that ink reveal the text as it's passing through? I think that'd be pretty amazing. So I'm gonna quickly change this text here to say instead of train, to say color resize it. Let's go back to our normal timeline here. And so this is the effect that I want, but if we can just make the background white, that would be super cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a solid white by going over here to your toolbox here and underneath the generator section, you can choose solid color. Click and drag that over here. You can see here that right now it's black. We can click on our solid color, go up to the inspector window, underneath generator, click it, and let's make it perfectly white. Awesome, except uh, it doesn't let us do that underneath the text. For whatever reason, the text itself has that black background, so we're gonna need to get rid of that. I'm gonna show you two different methods to be able to get that finished look. First thing we need to do is take the text and the ink background itself, click and drag to highlight them both, Right click, new compound clip. Let's say color ink text. Cool. And from here, because this isn't a piece of text, this is an actual compound clip, we can highlight it, go to color, and do the exact same thing that we did before. Underneath our qualifier section here, just take our picker, click on black, right click, add alpha output, click and drag the line, it's inverted, so all we have to do here quick is hit the invert button, and voila, that's our effect. Pretty cool, right? Now, here's the problem with using this method. For me personally, it, it's not quite good enough. You can see here that around sections like here in particular, it's really challenging, sadly, to get a perfect key. It's close, but it's not flawless. You can work with trying to get rid of it through noise options through clean black options but in my opinion it never gets quite there without risking kind of ruining the outline of, of your text here so if that method works for you great I'm gonna show you one more method here that I actually prefer go back to your edit panel and here taking your color ink text compound clip go down to the fusion section if you haven't worked in fusion before that's okay just follow exactly step by step with me click on your media in one and if you're on a PC, hit Control and then Spacebar at the same time. If you're on a Mac, it's Command Spacebar. And that brings up your select tool options. And you're looking for Luma Keyer. Click on that, add it. And right there, you can kind of see the black is already fading away, but it's also diving into the, into the uh, color text here. Just take the slider here, dial it all the way back. And voila, that's the effect that we're going for. Go back to your edit panel and our effect is complete. So now hopefully you're really comfortable with working with text inside of Resolve, but even if that's the case, you still might wanna download third-party templates and macros to be able to use to save a lot of time. And if you do end up using those, you'll find them underneath your Fusion title section here. And if you did need help actually installing those to begin with, we have an entire video dedicated to just that process. And you can click and drag them onto your timeline just like any other piece of text. So these are a couple options that I downloaded from OceanArray.com and you can see that they're really complex and intricate and would take a lot of time to create yourself. So it's really nice to have all of that legwork done for you and then all you have to do is highlight it, go up to your inspector and change the parameters that you want to. So I'm gonna make mine say something a little different. Change the font and change the background color. 
And now in literally just a couple seconds, I have some text that's amazingly intricate and complex, but conveys exactly the message that I want it to convey. If you were interested in picking up these titles or any of our DaVinci Resolve templates in general, you can find those over at motionarray.com and I'll make sure to link to those. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you did get anything out of this tutorial, please consider hitting the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and make sure to share this video with a fellow video editor friend. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.